Gentleman has six minutes remaining. I thank the gentleman for yielding. I thank him so much uh, for his role in bringing this bill to the floor in the subcommittee where he chairs the subcommittee and in the, in the full committee during the debate and here on the floor today. And I thank all of my colleagues who voted in this bill. I don't know, maybe you've been doing business so long where you've been paying back your supporters, you think that's the way everybody does business. And that's why you've got people heading down toward the courthouse. And that's why you lost your leadership, because they were paying back the, their supporters. Now, I know it's hard to change your stripes, and some of you will be wearing stripes. But the fact of the matter is, that's not the way we're doing business, ladies and gentlemen. But that's your language, and that's your habit, and that's the way you ran the Congress. It was pay to play, pay to play. Well, a new day's in town, and we're here today about whether or not workers will simply have the choice to exercise a right that's been in the law for 70 years, a right that can be taken away from them like that by an employer, simply says no to a majority of people who want a workplace, a right that's part of the National Labor Relations Act, but it's revoked by employers arbitrarily, without reason, without purpose. Then they can insert those employees into a process that is well documented now of hundreds of thousands of employees over the last decade that have been punished and had retribution and been, been harassed, lost pay, lost their homes, lost their jobs, lost their good shift, lost their premium time. That's the record. That's the record. So the question is simply this. Will we give these employees a choice to decide? Do I get to have an NLRB election, or do I want to choose this? 30% can have an election. It takes 50% to have a card check. And your secret ballot, uh, Ms. Ms. McKean, and your secret ballot, you forgot to have the secret ballot for the decert, the decertification election. Apparently, you don't need a secret ballot for that. You just have a card check. OK. Uh, so now that we understand what's going on here, let's remember today that families find themselves in the most difficult of economic situations. Today, you go and your employer has reduced your pension, they've terminated your pension, they've reduced the payments into your pension, they extend the time of years which you have to participate in the pension before you can vest. Your health care, they're asking you to pay more, they're reducing the benefits that you're paying more for. They change your hours, they change your pay, they change the premium pay, they change your shift. And so finally people say, I got to have some say. I want the right to organize at work. I need representation. As a new senator from Virginia said, everybody needs an agent. I need somebody to negotiate with this employer because I'm not able to support my family. My wages aren't going up. The productivity is going up, the highest productivity in the history of the country, and employees are taking home the smallest share. Who's taking the most home? The CEOs with their arbitrary golden parachutes and golden handshakes. What about the person trying to support a middle class family? What about the person trying to decide where they can hold on to their house or they can buy their first house? Where do they get to negotiate? The law says go to the NLR, National Labor Relations Act, and there you find a provision that says an employee has a choice of how to do this. But if they choose a card check, the employer can take it away from them. That's not democracy. That's arbitrary. That's capricious. That's an outrage. These are real people. These are real people that have been hurt this way. I conducted a hearing, and Ivo Camille worked for Sun Diamond, Sun Diamond Corporation, co-op, for 35 years, was awarded all kinds of awards for being an outstanding employee. 35 years he gave them their life. And then Ivo said he wanted a union, and they fired him. And when he said that to our hearing, he started to cry. 35 years he'd worked and he started to cry. My granddaughter was sitting next to me in the hearing. She had to leave early, but she had her father call me from the car. She got on the phone and she said, Papa, she said, Papa, why did that man have to cry in front of all those people? I said, Montana, he cried because he was embarrassed to admit to other people that he couldn't provide for his family, that he lost a job that he was proud of. He lost a job because he simply spoke up. 
another constitutional right you forget sometimes. He simply spoke up and said, I'd like to have representation at work. And I vote Camille, Camila was fired, along with tens of thousands of other workers who simply made that statement to their employer. You believe that's a fair system? That's a fair system that people can be fired? And if you go and he gets, when he gets his job back, he gets his back pay, no penalty for doing this. And that's why 30,000 people will take action against him, because there's no penalty for the, for the employer to fire these people. Because what do they want? They're trying to increase the security in the workplace. They're trying to increase the, 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 the financial security of their families. You can pick up the paper every day and understand what's happening to people with health care, with their pensions. You can see what happens every day. The wages of working people are flat. They've been decreasing over the years, even as they've been the best workforce in America. And now they understand the risk that they run. They want more say. They want their, their, they want their employers to quit fooling around with their pension plans and dipping into their retirement funds and putting those things at risk. And that's what the Employee Free Choice does. Act does. It gives these employees a choice to have representation and protect their health and welfare and the support of their families. I urge a, a vote against the McKeon Amendment and support of the legislation. The gentleman's time has expired. And the question now is on adoption of the amendment.